Good morning, everyone, and happy Monday. I guess it's actually good afternoon. So thank you guys so much for joining me here on a very, very hot Monday in Southern California. It's probably close to 100 degrees, so fingers crossed that my phone doesn't overheat. I'm here in the container garden, as you can see behind me, <clears throat> and it is nicely shaded by an umbrella, but we're hoping that things go well. So I am hearing in the chat, in the pre-live stream, that it is hot all over the country, even up in Canada. It's been in the 90s, which is absolutely crazy. And I know a lot of people up there don't have air conditioning. So I hope you guys are staying cool. Hope your garden's staying cool. Hopefully you're able to keep your garden covered with some shade cloth to uh, keep those vegetables producing. They don't like temperatures once it gets over 90 degrees. So I want to hear from you guys what you're harvesting in your garden right now. Um, if you saw my Instagram post this morning, we pulled out some beautiful vegetables from the garden grocery store over the weekend some uh, long finger-like eggplant called Ikebon, some squash, some tomatoes, some beautiful herbs, and of course, um, camera guy was able to um, grill them up, and we had an absolutely delicious um, garden grocery store dinner. So let me know what you're harvesting, and let me say hello to those of you here in the chat. I know we do have a lot of newcomers here this week. Um, let me try to see if I can turn up the volume on my microphone just a bit. Um, there we go and pointed a little bit towards towards me here. So hopefully that will help You might want to refresh your page if you're having trouble um, We do have a lot of newcomers here in the chat joining me for the very first time on our live stream So welcome so glad that you're here so glad you're taking time out of your Monday to join us um, I know that you could be doing uh, anything else today So I really appreciate you taking some time on this Monday today We're going to be talking about things that you can do right now in July so that you can keep those beautiful harvests going into the late summer and even into the fall. So before we get into that, let's say hello and, and see who is here. Oh, by the way, Nisha, um, she's a longtime viewer of our channel and of our live streams. She is moderating today. So thank you so much, Nisha. I really appreciate you um, being here as a moderator. Cliff is on vacation. He will be back next week. And I appreciate Nisha um, stepping in. Uh, we, we got to meet her last fall up in Northern California, and we really appreciate all of your support, Nisha. So thank you so much. Uh, Vanny K is saying hello. Hi, how are you doing? Um, Sister Marcel, hello. Okay, good. I'm glad that you can hear me now. Um, Madavi Nori planted eggplants a month ago, some in partial sun and just not growing. Um, okay, if you can, get them into full sun. They are a warm weather vegetable and they love that full sun. So I don't know if there's anywhere you can move them to. Um, or just hang on. They, they will grow, but they will take a little bit longer. Angela's Garden Sense, how are you? From Maryland, Colin the Man Daily. Happy Monday. So glad that you're here. Jacqueline Phillips, my first time. Thank you, Jacqueline. I'm so glad that you're here. Jan, I haven't harvested yet. Everything is still growing. The only thing I enjoyed was microgreens. Aloha from Oahu. Okay, Jan, hang in there. Um, things, sometimes patience is the hardest part of gardening and it's always hard to wait, but your harvest will come. The microgreens are fantastic though, aren't they? We have Rod here from Baja and Stacy Buxton. First time seeing a live stream. Awesome. Hello from Colorado. Wonderful. I grew up in Colorado. So, so glad that you're there. Tommy Daly is here. Hello, Kimba. I know, Tommy, you've been trying to get on a live stream for a while. So I'm so glad that it finally worked out and you're able to, to get the right time and to be here today. Thank you so much. RJ harvesting okra, eggplant, squash, cucumber, zucchini, bell peppers, basil, sugar baby, watermelon, and variety of flowers. Wow, you're going crazy. That is just absolutely amazing. Stephen Hunt, hello from Muskoka, Canada. Stay cool up there, Stephen. I know that it is super, super hot. So let's jump into our topic for today. How to keep those harvests coming. Uh, what to do now to keep those harvests coming into the late summer and even into fall. So for those of you that are gardening for the very first time, um, it is not time to stop planting. A lot of people think you can only have a garden in the summertime. Not true. You can actually have a garden into the fall months. A lot of vegetables will even take a frost, a light frost. Um, some will take a uh, you know more harder or a harder frost, but definitely there's lots and lots of vegetables that will take a light frost. And we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But 
For more info on cool weather vegetables and warm weather vegetables, grab a copy of my book. I've got a whole list in here, um, what they are. The warm weather vegetables are those summer veggies that most of you are probably going right now. The tomatoes, the cucumbers, the eggplant, the beans, all those beautiful warm weather vegetables. They love the summer temperatures. Um, up to about 85 or 90 degrees. So um, they grow very well in the summer. The cool weather vegetables are things like broccoli, cauliflower, um, kale, lettuce. They like temperatures of 75 degrees or under, and a lot of them will take a frost. Now, before we get too far into our topic, I wanna to show you guys this absolutely beautiful container of beans right here. I think this is probably one of the best containers of beans I've ever grown. This is in the Purple Cali Kim Smart Pots and it is growing absolutely beautifully. It's so, so, the beans are so big and so healthy. They're just starting to flower and produce fruit. And if you've been joining us with our container garden series, you saw the very first video maybe six weeks ago when we planted seeds right here in this container. And I've been keeping up with the neem peppermint rosemary oil spray to help with the bugs. Um, beans don't need a lot of extra fertilizer, so I really haven't been fertilizing them and they are growing beautifully. So I'm super excited to be able to harvest those probably within a couple of weeks, I would imagine. So let me know here in the chat if you are growing beans as well. Um, and that is, let's see who asked that question. Stacy, that is probably um, one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven different seeds I planted in there. Um, so seven plants and they are just doing amazing. I usually have uh, spider mite problems on my beans, but with the neem peppermint rosemary oil, it has really kept them away this year. And I'm very thankful. I'm so excited for a really good bean harvest from this container. So um, if you want beans, I got a bean seed collection and also the purple um, Calicum Smart Pots. They are really liking this spot. They got the sweet spot this year. Okay, so first thing, and a lot of us have already been talking about this, to keep the harvest going, what to do now in July. First of all, make sure that you are harvesting your vegetables. I know that seems kind of crazy, but harvest your vegetable vegetables and enjoy them. All of your hard work is um, at this point during the, during the summer or sometime during the month is coming to fruition. You are able to enjoy the rewards, the benefits, and just revel in the rewards of growing your own food. It's so satisfying to go out and harvest. And hopefully you guys were able to see the 4th of July harvest that we did a week or so ago. And we thoroughly enjoyed that and enjoyed eating the vegetables. And it's just so much fun and so rewarding to harvest to cook them up and then to share them with your family and friends. And if you guys have been harvesting for the very first time, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So for most vegetables, they are meant to reproduce. So the more you harvest, the more they are going to reproduce. If you forget to harvest or don't harvest for a while, a lot of times it sends a signal to the plant to stop growing and to stop reproducing. Um, and a lot of times, um, like I've shown it in a couple of my videos, the scarlet runner beans that have gotten very, very large, they're great for seed saving, but if you leave a lot of vegetables on the plant to save seeds and to get really large, then the, the plant, um, more often than not, will slow down in its production and won't keep on going. Like beans, the more you pick, the more it produces. So you need to take off those vegetables, eat them, enjoy the harvest, and then let the plant regenerate and start to reproduce again. So that's one way that you can make sure that you have those harvests that keep on going. Just go out in your garden, enjoy yourself, check your garden daily, harvest, if you have too much, then give them away to some neighbors and some friends. So I've been hearing a lot of comments in the chat as to what you're harvesting. And I would love to um, hear some more and what you're enjoying about your harvest. Okay, question here from Sal Al. I have a bell pepper plant that has had one pepper on it forever, but it's not ripening. Should I go ahead and pick it to force the plant to make more. Um, okay, you know what, Al, that's, or Sal, Al, sorry, I'm, the phone is dimming, say Al, sorry. Um, I would, you know, it's really an individual preference. I like to wait until the peppers turn the color that they're supposed to be. So the California Wonder Peppers are supposed to be, or, you know, ideally, they're going to be a nice bright red color. However, you can pick peppers at different stages. So go back and watch my 4th of July harvest. I do show a California Wonder Pepper that I picked when it was green because it has some sun scald on it. And you know what? It tasted absolutely delicious. So I would say that's probably an individual preference. It will have the best flavor 
when it is um, when it is picked at the peak of ripeness. So I do have in my book, a organic gardening for everyone, a chapter that I dedicate completely to harvesting. So again, if a lot of you are brand new to gardening, you are gonna wanna grab a copy of this because the chapter that it's called, it's in chapter nine. And a lot of people, if you're new, how are you gonna know when and how to harvest your vegetables? So this chapter is called Harvesting Organic Vegetables Like a Pro. There's all kinds of tips in here on when to harvest some of the most popular vegetables, such as peppers, I believe I do. Yes, I have a section in here, how and when to harvest peppers. And um, there's a lot of individual preferences in here, but it does tell you some ideal tips and tricks for harvesting some of the most popular cool and warm weather vegetables. So grab a copy of this. Um, you can grab it in a package with my late summer garden seed collection, and then you'll have it all right at your fingertips. And by the way, guys, I know a couple of you have purchased the spiral bound edition on Amazon. I actually got one for myself just to see what it was like. And it is super cool. It's spiral bound. Um, it's not gonna come signed like the books that you would purchase on my website. Cali Kim Garden and Home will come signed and personalized, but it's a really fun resource um, because you can just open it up, lay it flat, bring it out in the garden with you and have it as a manual as you're out there harvesting or planting. And it's really pretty handy. I thought it was um, very, very cool when I got my copy. So thank you so, so much for your question. Let's um, take one more question and we'll go back into our second thing to do here in July. Okay, question from Mika. I have harvested many of my potatoes, onions, all of my garlic, bok choy, kale, strawberries, gooseberries, and tomatoes. Oh my goodness. You are uh, absolutely going crazy there. That is awesome. And I bet you are totally enjoying the fruits of your labor. So that is awesome. Um, okay, Rita Gibson. Hi, welcome Rita from San Diego. And she's telling Tommy Daly, lizards love crickets and grasshoppers. Okay, we have tons of lizards here in California. It's nice and hot. And Mac loves to chase the lizards. He doesn't really ever catch them, but he really enjoys it. Okay, Evelyn is growing for the first time salt and pepper cucumbers. Okay, I have never heard of that. I mean, I've heard of that variety, but I've never grown it. But I'm sure it's super delicious. Cucumbers are so much fun to have on a hot summer's day. And we have a lot of cucumbers starting to get ripe here. I don't know if you guys can see that cucumber plant behind me. The sun is just so wacky right now. Um, oh, here we go, right there. <laughs> Growing up in the container garden on the trellis, um, I did have to trim off some bug damaged leaves, but it has got a lot of little baby cucumbers on it. So I'm sure you are enjoying your cucumber harvest. Okay, next tip to do here to do here in July to keep those harvests coming. So now is the time in July to, spay, to pay special attention to managing pests, heat and disease. So as we've been talking, a lot of us are going through a heat wave. Once your garden and the temperatures heat up to over 90 degrees, it's really important that if at all possible, you provide your garden with some type of shade. Because what happens is the plants get stressed when it gets too hot. When they get stressed, they respond by the flowers drying up, falling off, and then you pretty much have to start all over with fruit production. So go back and watch my video from last week on This Week in the Garden. I show how I'm shading my plants and I talk a little bit about that, about how much cooler it stays under shade cloth. So that's one thing that I like to do here. We've had shade cloth up for almost a week. Um, you can see some up there over the wall saddle planters and it is it still allows the sun to get through that's a 40 percent shade block and i put links to all that in the video description in case you'd like to use it but you can also use i see that white um a sheer it's actually a, a sheer curtain i have over my pot of lettuce if you have any kind of sheer fabric laying around your house that works great for shade cloth it does still allow the sunlight to get through which is really nice so your plants still get a little bit of sun if worse comes to worse, I would just um, cover it with a sheet um, because if, although your sun's not gonna get through, it's better than your plants absolutely burning up in the sun. So if you can at all, um, grab yourself some shade cloth, look around your house, see what you have that you can use and shade your plants. You'll be amazed at how it will really help not only keep your plants alive, but keep them producing. They're definitely gonna go grow a lot slower and produce a lot slower in the heat, but at least that's a lot better than your plants completely burning up and you having nothing to harvest, especially if you live in a super hot location. Now I know we have a few viewers here 
um, Pat Sella and P. Treadway. I'm not sure if um, she, Patricia, is here. But they both live um, in very hot areas in Arizona. We have one viewer here from Trinidad and Tobago. And I never say that right, so I'm sorry about that. Where they were mentioning it's well over 100 degrees, 110, 115, 120. And some of them do have um, shade cloth structures. Now, again, I show how to put shade cloth up with just stakes. Um, let me show you the shade cloth I have. It's right in front of me. Turn my camera around here so you guys can see. I don't have it up at the moment, um, but you can see it's draped there over my cucumber plant. And I just have it held into place with a little clip. This little binder clip here is what I use um, to hold my shade cloth in place. So you don't even have to have a permanent structure. Um, just get creative, keep it simple, but do try and protect your garden in the heat. Now, the other thing I think is really important this time of the year is to protect your garden from pests and disease. So I did a video a couple weeks ago on organic pest control. Um, so go back and watch that video. There's some very simple things you can do, like even just spray your plants off with water. That works really, really well with aphids. Um, and then uh, there's also a neem peppermint rosemary oil spray that you can do. And if you keep it up and do it as preventative, then um, hopefully the pests will never come around to bother you in the first place. But it definitely, definitely does cut down on the pest issues. I've been using it every two weeks in my garden and I have seen a humongous difference. So please go back and watch that video. Super easy to make, very inexpensive. I get all of my supplies over at therestedgarden.com. So he's got a nice little kit put together of um, the neem, peppermint, and rosemary oil and that can really help your garden tremendously. As far as disease goes, um, the biggest thing for that is keep your plants pruned from anything that looks like spotted or yellowing or anything like that, that could be disease starting. Usually it starts from the bottom of the plant and moves up. Um, and then uh, you wanna give them a good feeding after you prune them. But the biggest thing you can do for your plants, make sure to help keep them disease free, water at the bottom, and then provide plenty of airflow by keeping some of the bottom leaves trimmed off. So let me hear from you now how things are going in your garden as far as the heat control, as far as the disease go is going, and as far as the pest, is, pest control is going. Because a lot of times in the heat, that's when the pests and the disease um, like to come in. So let me hear how things are going. Okay, Marie, question, does neem oil help stop flea beetles okay it will help with anything that chews or sucks on the plants such as the aphids the flea beetles do chew on the plants so it definitely will help with that but the key with the neem oil is is i would highly suggest applying it as a prevention um, you can definitely apply it when you do have an infestation it just takes a little bit longer to get rid of because it's not a um it's an organic pesticide and it's not a one and done, so you do have to apply it regularly. And my video on organic pest control will give you all the details on that. But a lot of times what you can do is just use water to rinse off the pests and keep up with that. Check in with your plants every day and rinse them off with water if you see bugs. Pick the bugs or the little cabbage loopers off and a lot of times that's enough. The problem comes in when you're not in your garden, you're on vacation and you go away and you come back and you have all kinds of issues to deal with, and that's happened to me before as well. Okay, Evan, I've had 50% shade cloth on now for about a week because of this heat wave. Will my plants start to suffer due to the lack of sun for so long? Okay, that's one thing I didn't mention, so I'm glad you brought that up. Um, I, in my video I posted last week, my This Week in the Garden video, what I mentioned for that was, what I try and do, um, if you live in an area where you do have some morning sun that's not quite so intense, I try and take off areas of my shade cloth so they still do get a couple hours of morning sun. But in the long run, they're not going to suffer that much because the sun is still getting through. They'll suffer a lot more in the heat. Um, they'll definitely, their growth will be slower. But you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons. You got the heat where they most likely will burn up or you have the shade cloth where they might grow slower but they're still gonna stay alive. So you kind of have to balance that out and then pick the option that works best for you. But the shade cloth has worked very well for me and I haven't seen my plants suffer. Most of them have been covered. That big area in my garden, the big hill in my garden I show on the This Week in the Garden video has been covered for about a week now and I'll be probably be leaving it up for most of this week as well. So great question, thank you so much. Okay, Catherine, 
Uh, first it was snails, slugs in the spring, and then it was the roly polies. Now it's the cabbage white butterfly caterpillars. Oh, that's crazy. Um, yeah, that can be really frustrating. I'm really sorry to hear that you've had so many challenges. There are at times those uh, challenging things that happen in the garden. So um, just keep on going. I would encourage you not to give up. Um, one thing that you can try with the cabbage looper butterflies, the white moths, is see back there again, that white sheer um, curtain. There is something, you can either use something like that, cover your vegetables um, right when you plant them with that. Still allow sun to get through, that will help keep the moths off your plants. Um, you, there's also something called ag fabric. I uh, myself have never used it, but I've had friends who've had good luck with it. It's very similar to the white sheer curtain. It has more holes in it like a shade cloth does and really does help protect your uh, vegetables from the cabbage uh, moth. So good luck with that, hopefully. Um, that goes well for you. Okay, let's see. Let's go into the next tip here. First one is to do in July here is harvest, enjoy the rewards, help keep your plants producing, manage disease, number two, manage disease, pests, and heat. Number three, really important now, now that your plants have probably been in the ground at least a month or six weeks or maybe longer, make sure that you give your plants a summer boost. Uh, make sure that you're feeding them regularly. And by a summer boost, I mean, you can, if you have compost, you can put a, a handful of compost at the the base of your plants, throw some um, in the around your plants in your containers, water it in really well. That'll really help give your plants the boost they need to keep on producing, especially when they're flowering and fruiting. You don't want to ne neglect fertilizing, especially in containers. As I mentioned on last week's watermelon video, you especially want to fertilize your containers every seven to ten days. Um, because they need that boost to keep up with the fruit production. And if you think about it, when you water your containers, the water drains through, a lot of the nutrients drain through with it. So they do need to be fed regularly. And you can really see the difference regular feeding makes. Uh, I mean, just look at this garden. It's amazing how about six weeks ago, there was nothing in this space but a wooden deck. And now it's a thriving vegetable garden. We'll be harvesting tiny Tim tomatoes very soon. There's all kinds of green ones on there. Um, there is the mint is going crazy. We've been pulling cucumbers out, lettuce, greens, kale, uh, a few strawberries back in there. So fertilize, my favorite thing to fertilize with when you first plant is good dirt plant food. It's higher in nitrogen. It has a 10% nitrogen. So that's great because it produces a lot of green leafy growth to really help your plants be healthy. And then as my plants start to flower and bloom, I give them the Vermisteria worm tea, which is more of a mild type fertilizer, but it keeps your plants healthy. It's got lots of good bacteria in it and just gives your plants that nice, slow and steady growth. Now, one thing I do like to do though, if you have any pest or disease issues and you have to prune heavily, there were um, some leaf miners on this cucumber plant and I had to prune a lot of the leaves off yesterday. I gave it some good dirt plant food and worm tea. You can definitely mix them together because I want a lot of new leaves to grow. So it's definitely okay to heavily prune your plants, especially if you have some, um, here we go, especially if you have some disease or pests like that, and then make sure you give them a good healthy dose of fertilizer. So now in July, definitely the time to go around, give your whole entire garden a nice summer boost to keep it producing so that it doesn't peter out here at the end of the summer in July and August and that you keep those harvests coming. It definitely needs that good um, yummy food just like our bodies do. It gets depleted. Okay, let's head back into the chat and let me see what questions you have about uh, fertilizing it. Okay, fresh landscape. What NPK is worm tea is? You know what? I would have to look on the back of the bottle I don't have one right out here. It is very low in NPK. Um, I think it's like a half percent or something like that in each of them, but I have to look for sure. Um, however, don't let that fool you. It's got it's chock full of, of um, uh, beneficial bacteria and microbes, which are critical to the growth and health of your plant. When I started first using Vermistera maybe four years ago now, um, I noticed a huge difference. And oh, thank you very much, Nisha. Thank you, I appreciate that. One, zero, one. So 1% 1 nitrogen, 0% um, uh, P, uh, phosphorus, and the K is the potassium. 
unless I got those mixed up. So yeah, it's very low in those. But the great thing about the worm tea is you can give it to your plants pretty much anytime you water. Um, and it never burns your plants. Not once have I had any of my plants burned with Burmistera worm tea like you might have with commercial fertilizers. And the same goes with the good dirt plant food. Um, I've never had my plants burn with that. And I do tend to water, um, you know, pretty often with the Vermistera worm tea. Even my entire garden, I probably water with it every two weeks. The containers definitely get watered with it every week to, um, 10 days, maybe every two weeks or so too. So yeah, a great way. But if you can't afford to buy fertilizers, make your own compost. That's a great way to do it as well. The fertilizers definitely help. Um, but compost is a great way to fertilize your garden for free. So do that as well. Okay, Jack, question. Hi, Jack. My pepper blossoms keep dropping off. It's been in the upper 80s to mid 90s. This is only happening on my bell peppers though. All the others have been producing. What should I do? Okay, before I answer that, I'm going to scoot back a little bit because the sun is starting to hit my phone <laughs> and we don't want it overheating. Okay, so Jack, um, do you have them covered with shade cloth? That's the only thing I can think of. Um, also, sometimes when you overwater your peppers, they do tend to get yellowing leaves and kind of droopy a little bit and it might put them under a little bit of stress. The peppers can actually stand to dry out just a bit and I know you get a ton of rain there in Maryland so that could possibly be one of the reasons but I would recommend if you have some shade cloth covering them up. I know you get a ton of humidity there and a ton of heat so just do the best you can and um, you know you might want to give them a little bit of a boost with some compost um, and then hopefully that will pick them back up again. Try not to over fertilize, um, especially if they're in a situation like that. But you know, every couple of weeks to make sure that they're healthy, make sure they're not getting too much moisture if at all possible. And then just be patient, hang, on, hang in there and hopefully you'll get some new fresh blossoms very soon. Okay, Yolanda, where do you get shade cloth? Okay. Great question then, great question Yolanda. You can pick some up. A lot of times your local hardware stores will have it. I've gotten some at Home Depot before, but by far the least expensive place I found it is on Amazon. You can get really large pieces for 20 or $25. It could cost you anywhere from 35 to $40 or more for the same size at Home Depot. <clears throat> and Nisha's popping in links in the video description. Um, to, uh, to the shade cloth on Amazon. And just so you guys know, make sure that you check the, um, the video descriptions because I do put all of the links of the products that I use in my videos in the video descriptions as well as links to any videos that I might refer to. There's a wealth of information there. I get tons of questions, where do I find this or that product? And instead of waiting for me to get back to you, which these days could be a while because I'm getting tons of emails, please just look in the video description. I'll save you a lot of time and then that way you can get the products to you faster. And those are all products I've used and tested. So you're sure to get something that does work. <clears throat> okay, um, let's talk about, because here's a question from James. Hi James. Is it too late to plant butternut squash here in SoCal? And I'm gonna talk about in just a second after I answer your question, the next thing, the next tip to do here in July, and that is to plant more seeds. And here in Southern California, it's not too late to plant butternut squash. And here's how you're gonna tell if you still have time left in your growing season. You wanna take a look at the seed that you're going to grow, the back of the seed packet, see what the days to maturity are. For example, that way you can see if you have still have time left in your growing season. For example, beans, these beautiful beans right behind me here, go from seed to harvest under ideal conditions in about six weeks or so, six to eight weeks. So if you still have six to eight weeks before your first frost, which hopefully most of us do, except maybe some of you uh, Canadians up north there, you can get beans planted. So don't stop planting. Um, you can plant vegetables like beans, some quick growing vegetables like beans, like um, basil is a very fast growing herb. You can plant squash, most varieties of squash. Butternut squash takes a little bit longer. It's usually about three to four months, but here in Southern California, we've got plenty of time to still plant butternut squash. I just started some seeds a few weeks ago that I haven't planted out yet. Um, you can plant, the Tiny Tim tomatoes are a great one. 
Uh, these little small dwarf tomatoes here. These are one of my favorite varieties. These are from my container garden seed collection. They're also in the late summer garden seed collection. They go from seed to harvest in around eight weeks or so. So um, yeah, if you do need seeds, I did design a seed collection, especially for late summer growing called the late summer garden seed collection. And like I mentioned, it has some of those vegetables. It has some blue lake bush beans, which I've got right here, which are doing great for me. Basil, the tiny Tim tomatoes, it's a, a smaller variety of squash, the uh, scallop squash. It has uh, the Space Master cucumber and this darling little lily put zinnia because you don't want to forget the flowers to bring on the pollinators. This is a dwarf zinnia. It grows to about two feet and it's really fun to pop in containers and uh, bring the pollinators into your garden. So this is a great one for you to purchase to keep those harvests coming because a lot of times your summer vegetables are going to be coming to the end in August and you're going to wish that you started a brand new wave right about now in mid-July that'll be ready to harvest late August, early September and you're going to be so glad you still have a new fresh wave of tasty vegetables to plant. The other thing is, believe it or not guys, uh, September is just about six weeks away and that's when we want to in most parts of the country, not here in Southern California, but you want to start thinking about getting your fall garden planted. Now fall gardening in Southern California is pretty much comes in the winter time because we have very hot falls typically where I live um, until probably November or December. So my best time for cool weather vegetables is in the winter time. But the fall garden seed collection is a great one for a lot of the US to start now. There's 14 varieties and you're absolutely right. Uh, my book does cover most of the basic vegetables. These are all cool weather vegetables. So they're gonna do well in temperatures of 75 degrees or under. And most of them will take a light frost. So if you do get a frost, you want to get them started from seed indoors now because it's too hot outside. So start them from seed indoors and you'll have transplants ready in about six weeks in September to put in your garden. So they will be ready to mature as maybe your first frost is coming on and a lot of them will last into the fall. So here in this collection, you have vegetables like broccoli, cabbage. Um, let me grab my list here because I always forget all of them. You have some beets, which are so easy to grow. You have um, some dill collards, um, kohlrabi, which is a really fun one. You have a lot of lettuce. You have the sugar snap peas, some spinach. So these are all great cool weather vegetables. It's really fun to have the variety in your garden too after growing the tomatoes and everything else. So yeah, you want to grab one of these as well. Maybe even grab both of the late summer and the fall and that way you're not going to run out. And the late summer comes with um, a bundle with the book where you can save some money. And I'm probably going to be doing that with the fall garden um, this week bundling it together so you can save five dollars. Okay, what's is what's the time frame of seed to flower for zinnia? Okay, usually they're flowering. I think these were planted uh, maybe six or eight weeks ago and they're already flowering, especially in the summer heat. They grow so so fast so you could easily plant some seeds now and most likely they would be flowering by the time you hit I'd say the end of August, especially if you're getting some really um, warm temperatures. So Tommy, thank you so much. I'm getting some of Kimpa's seeds. Thank you, I really appreciate it. And you guys, we are a small business here. This is my full-time job here on YouTube and through our website. So I really do appreciate all of your support. A lot of you are first time with me this year and it's been so much fun to see how much you have enjoyed gardening. So don't let your summer gardens end. You definitely do want to plant into the fall. You are, I know a lot of you are getting hooked on those fresh veggies and you can have fresh veggies into the fall and the beginning of the winter months. If you're in a Southern climate like California, you can grow veggies all year. Um, and we'll be doing that here throughout the winter months. And even if you live in a cold winter climate, we do a lot of indoor gardening too. So you can still plant um, indoors as well. Okay, let's jump in, see whatever questions we have left. Okay, um, and yes, I d have had a couple of questions. Thank you so much, Tommy. A couple of questions about shipping. At this point in time, we are still kind of restricted because of the coronavirus to shipping just in the U.S. and in Canada. So I'm so sorry for those of you um, that live internationally. What a few people have done is had my seeds shipped to some friends in the U.S. or Canada, then had those friends or family ship them directly to them um, wherever they might be around the world. So if that's an option for you, then um, definitely um, do that. Okay, let's see. Can I still grow zucchini in Nevada? Yes, absolutely. Nevada stays hot um, a lot later into the fall like we do in California. 
Zucchini, again, zucchini grows from seed to harvest about six to eight weeks. And all that info is right here in my book. So you might want to grab a copy of this so you have it all on hand. So you got definitely have six weeks left of hot weather in Nevada. Plenty of time to get new zucchini planted and harvested. Okay, let's see. Um, okay, I will check and see, Tommy. I know the last time I checked, um, it was very, very restricted. And the only problem with international shipping, which I run into problems with, is I'm getting a lot of them returned. And that's... You know, people don't want to pay for shipping and then have their product returned. And unfortunately, I'm not able to cover that shipping. So it does get costly, but I will look into that and see if we can't make some countries available. USPS is inundated. Most packages, I'd say 90% of the seed collections that I mail out are getting through. There's a couple that have gotten lost, for them, but for the most part, they're doing really, really well. Okay, uh, heart, heart task. <laughs> is it too late to start eggplant in SoCal? Okay, eggplant does take a little bit of time to grow from seed. What I would suggest, um, there's still plenty of transplants available at the garden center, which is what I did for eggplant because I just did not get around to starting my eggplant from seed this year. So I picked up a couple packs of eggplant. You guys saw my harvest of that on my Instagram of the Ikebon. I also have some Black Beauty growing. Um, so I would recommend doing that for some of those things like eggplant and peppers that take a little bit longer to grow from seed. Grab some transplants at the garden center. It's going to cost you a little bit, but usually you can get a six pack for five or six dollars. It's still a lot cheaper, and you're going to have so much fun watching it grow. So definitely recommend that. Or start those quick growing vegetables from seed. Anything in the late summer garden seed collection will grow fast, and you shouldn't have any problem getting them to harvest um, in six to eight weeks. Uh, you know, as long as you live in the right climate. Okay, Andrea has a great comment here. She's in Denmark, and she did what I mentioned while I had some shipped to family members and then shipped to her in Denmark. It took three months for her to receive a package from the USA to Denmark. Yeah, crazy. Even Canada is taking at least two to three weeks. Sometimes it's, it's surprising, and it gets there in a week to ten days. So just be aware that shipping times are definitely longer. Pretty much in the U.S., I ship everything... Um, out usually within a day or two and regular first class package you can get in three to four days priority mail you can usually get in two to three days and like I said we've had pretty good luck with that but international is a different story so I do apologize for um for how that's going okay Tommy no lettuce in the heat my friend okay right now in the temperatures we're having it is a little bit tough to grow lettuce however don't give up, Tommy. I do have some growing back there under the shade cloth, and it is getting a little bit beat up, but it was good and established before the heat hit. Um, it's struggling a little bit right now, but it is still growing. It's not going to grow very fast in the heat. Your seeds are, are not going to germinate too well in the heat. I did just plant some seeds right before the heat hit. They did germinate, but they're really not growing at all right now. But don't give up on the greens. There's heat tolerant greens you can plant. Look at that kale and chard back there, you guys, in the purple uh, smart pots there. It's going crazy. Those are all from the container garden seed collection. I also have a whole seed collection with heat tolerant greens. I have the kale, two kinds of kale, the chard, a New Zealand spinach, and a more heat tolerant variety of lettuce. The romaines tend to do better in the heat. It has a Paris cause romaine, the red romaines, um, lettuce is like that. So definitely look for heat tolerant greens to grow. Okay, G Reef, are you going to do a harvest video soon? We did just do one on the 4th of July. Go check that one out. But we've always got something to harvest, so I'm sure that we will. I do have a lot of blackberries actually right now to harvest. So I was thinking about maybe doing one of those this week. So those actually you can't see from up here, but um, they're right over the deck rail right in front of me. So if that's something you'd be interested in, then let me know here in the chat. And that'll be a really fun video to film because I love the blackberries and we have a whole bunch of them this year. Okay, thank you so much, Tommy. You love the Kim's Garden Visits. Okay, I'm really enjoying the This Week in the Garden, just to kind of fill you in on what's going on, what I've been working on this week. It's a good way to update you on a lot of garden happenings and also get some of your feedback. We got some great feedback last week on the red and yellow planter area. And go back and watch that video because I would really like some suggestions. I've already gotten a few good ones on what to name that garden bed. Okay, okay, Nisha says she would like that. Okay, we'll try and get that filmed maybe even tomorrow because they definitely do need harvesting. 
Okay, question from Stacy. Have you ever used a planting tower, good or bad? Okay, Stacy, the only one that I've used that I've had great luck with is the strawberry crate tower and that I make myself. Oh, it's kind of hidden right now. Um, out of plastic crates. Oh, you can see it right there. Three plastic crates stacked up. Smart Pots has some fabulous crate liners um, that work great for holding the soil in. You cut holes in the sides and uh, there's a tiny Tim tomato on the top. So it has worked extremely well for me for the strawberries. I've grown them for years in the towers. I know there's lots of towers out there. That's a really inexpensive way to get a tower going. Um, so that's the only one that I personally have uh, experience with. So in the chat, let us know if you have experience with any of the other towers as well. Okay, Amber Jenkins. All right, how long do California wonders take to germinate? Been about two weeks and haven't popped up yet. Okay, peppers definitely do take longer to germinate. They can take two to three weeks, especially the hot peppers will take longer, but you definitely do want to put them on a heat mat. They need that bottom heat. It raises the temperature just a few degrees and you will have much better success. Even in the heat, I germinated some inside. I have a little grow closet inside just for vegetables, but I have a grow closet inside and I put some on the heat mat just until they germinated. They took about, I don't know, maybe five to seven days, then took them off the heat mat because it was way too hot in the closet for them to be growing with the heat mat on over the long term. And they're doing really well. They're a couple weeks old now. And I grew those, so I have some fresh plants to uh, put in my garden in September. Okay, I can't grow strawberries to save my life. Tommy, I'm so sorry about that. You may wanna try planting them um, in the towers if you haven't yet, and try and get them going when the weather's a little bit cooler. Right now, it's pretty warm. They don't like hot temperatures. They, they pretty much will stop flowering and fruiting unless you have them covered in shade cloth when the temperatures are over 85. So try it when the weather's a little bit cooler, and hopefully you'll have better luck. Okay, Yolanda, are cucumbers cold weather? No, they're not. They're warm weather vegetables. And again, I cover all that in my book. So brand new gardeners have got to pick up a copy of one of these. It is gonna be your garden manual. You will just devour it. Has all the information on cold weather, warm weather vegetables, everything you need to do to get them planted from seed to harvest in a quick, simple, inexpensive way. And you are gonna love it. So all the info is in there about that. Okay, thank you very much, Rod. Great comment. Gary at the Rusted Garden has some nice looking towers on one of his latest videos. Yeah, I think he's growing with the, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, we actually went to Gary's house last summer and visited, visited him and saw that tower and he was growing some tiny Tim tomatoes in it and they looked really, really good. So yeah, that, that tower is also, might be the, oh gosh, I don't want to say the name because I know I will probably mess it up. Okay, let's take a couple more questions before we sign off. I hope you guys have enjoyed these four things you can do in July to keep your harvest coming. You want to make sure that you are harvesting on a regular basis. You wanna make sure you're managing pest, disease, and heat. Number three, give your plants a summer boost and keep on planting seeds. Don't forget, don't forget to stop planting or don't forget to keep planting. So let's take a few more questions. And the green stock, thank you very much, Patsella, the green stock uh, towers. Yes, that's a good one as well. I've seen a lot of gardeners grow with that and I think it really works well. Okay, couple other questions here from the chat. Thank you, Sarah. You can get my book on my website, which is callikimgardeninghome.com. It's bundled together with several different seed collections. You can also grab it on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, pretty much any online store where books are sold, but you will get a signed personalized copy when you purchase it on my website, callikimgardeninghome.com. And that's always a lot of fun. Okay, here, having trouble getting New Zealand spinach to come up. Okay, great question here, Karen. That's another one of those because it is such a warm weather heat tolerant green that you can use a heat mat with, with just like you would with peppers. So pop some uh, seeds in peat pellets, pop some in a little container, pop it on a heat mat inside under a grow light and you will have them germinating probably within a week or two and soaking the seeds will definitely help speed that up as well okay let's see what else thanks for the tower comments wonderful any other questions here happy gardening it's great to see all the good positivity um, going on here and evelyn can you do a video on how to make compost 
Evelyn, I have a ton of videos on that and you do not want to miss those. I have a whole compost playlist. So when you go onto my channel, all you have to do in that little magnifying glass is type in the word compost and all of my videos will come up on compost. I have a complete um, A to Z composting where I've compiled all of my videos on composting. We did a brand new compost video earlier this year and I also have a video on how to compost in a five gallon smart pots. See if I have a five gallon so you can see how well it works. There's a five gallon right over there, guys, one of the Cali Kim smart pots. So you can compost even in a small space. How do you guys like my little holding area for my plants? These are all the plants I still have yet to get planted out in my garden. The herbs that we're growing for the herb garden video and the, the basil, all that are plants that I eventually will um, plant out. But yeah, you can definitely compost in a large space, in a small space. And I will have some more smart pots. I think they just got delivered as I was on the live stream. So they should be back in stock, the five gallons, um, this afternoon. But I do have a very limited supply at this time. So jump on this afternoon and get your order in before they sell out. I do have a pretty good supply of the purple Calicum smart pots, though. So if that's something you want, the beans are growing in, grab those as well. Those should be in stock, um, hopefully through the end of this week before they sell out. Okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us. What a fun Monday, and I'm so glad my phone did not overheat. We were able to get through the entire live stream. Look forward to seeing you on videos throughout this week. Hopefully, we'll get that blackberry harvest in. Should have another this week in the garden, and I am hoping to do another video in the container garden series on what you can do to maintain your container garden over the rest of the summer, and that will probably be our last video in that series. So thanks so much for joining me today, guys. So thankful that you're here. Thanks to Nisha again for moderating. And we'll see you guys next Monday at noon Pacific time on our Monday live stream as well. All right, bye-bye.